Welcome into the Coach Shinnick Show again from Valdosta, Georgia to start things off this week. A little bit different feel than the last time we were here a couple weeks ago. First of all, congratulations. Moving Thank on to, to the round of eight in the Division II playoffs. What a football game. I'm pretty sure my heart stopped at one point. I was looking for the defibrillators up there. 38-35, and your guys really a testament to the seniors that you have, a testament to the ethic and the work ethic with this football team to, to go 60 minutes, literally. Well, we, we, we said at halftime, our character is going to win the game for us. And, um, you know, it was going to take a team that believed in each other. It was going to take a team that just, you know, continued to encourage each other. And, you know, we got down and we found a way. And so, again, our character was going to win the game for us. I think you have fans back here. They're enjoying, they're enjoying the performance. Let's talk about this game, and you knew you had to get off to a good start, and, you know, kind of talking in, in the, the week leading up to it and your meetings before the game, the night before the game. It's like we got to come out. we got to you know, kind of establish ourselves, do what we didn't do in the first half last time. I thought you guys really kind of kept the momentum from the regular season game, rolled that into the first half of this one. We really did, and it probably as good a first half as we've played. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it might, might be as good a game as we've played uh, just to be able to sustain this. Um, they are – a, um, you know, they are an amazing football team and, and they are one of the best offenses probably Division II has ever seen and we talked about that last week. Uh, so to go toe to toe with those guys, we knew it was going to take something special. And um, we, you know, we were blessed in the first half because our turnovers didn't kill us. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two of them. Uh, but then when our defense got a turnover, uh, it just generated points for us, and, th and that was huge. First drive, you go right down the field. I know you wanted to get seven, mm -hmm. but we talked about it last week. I mean, Austin has really been kind of coming back to the 2017 Austin. Mm -hmm. He bangs home a field goal to cap mm -hmm. a really good first drive, and you you were saying, you know, staying out on the field offensively, keeping them on the sideline was important. It was. It was huge, and I think the first half we ran close to 40 plays. I think we ran 80 plays, uh, you know, for the, uh, for the game. But to be able to do that early and to get them out of rhythm offensively, um, you know, Credit to our offensive line and our running backs for just putting together, you know, a complete solid football game. They get the big strike to, to Gallimore for a touchdown. They take the lead, but then that would be the last lead they'd have for a while mm -hmm. before they kind of yeah. get it in. And we mentioned the running game. Anthony Johnson, I thought, had a great week of practice. I came out and watched him a couple times, hitting the holes hard, yep. running very hard. He caps the drive with a one-yard touchdown run. He had a dominant first half behind that line. No, he did, and, the, and I think the line set it up, and Anthony was hitting it and feeling it well, and I think Javon Newton uh, played off that extremely well. Uh, so, I mean, I'm really pleased, obviously, when, you know, Shamari goes down, you, you lose a dynamic player we needed somebody to step up in this game uh, and Anthony Johnson did in a big way right before uh, close to the half you get the big play over the top and it's Karan Ashley it, it kind of looked like he would be the, that kind of guy this is a game for him sure where if he could get deep and Austin threw a great ball he did and really they were they were really crowding us and um, keeping things underneath, and I think that's what allowed us to have so many completions there late. We tried to take a couple more shots and tried to get a couple more hits. They just didn't pan out, uh, but I think that opened up a lot of the underneath stuff. All right, you guys go to the locker room with the lead, but it was far from, from being oh. over. There was still 30 minutes to yeah. play, and, and really one of the wildest 30 minutes we've seen in quite a while. We'll get into the second half next here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Argo fans, we need your help helping our friends and neighbors in need. During the month of December, our men's and women's basketball teams will be collecting winter coats, hats, gloves, new and gently used winter clothing items to help families in the Pensacola area. Bins will be located inside the UWF Fieldhouse lobby. You can drop off donations throughout the week and at all home games through December 20th. All donated items will be loaded into a truck and delivered to Waterfront Rescue Mission December 23rd 
courtesy of our friends at Coastal Moving and Storage. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind, and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back to the Coach Sinek Show. Let's dive into the second half of this one. We saw it last week at Wingate. Uh, you know, Andre Duncan comes out and comes up with an incredible interception. Sure. It really kind of flips the game around a little bit. You guys do the same thing. You force a turnover, and it's Duncan again involved. And I think Trent Archie bit the strip, and Andre returns it a long way, and that, that's putting you right there. And the offense gets back out there and is able to get points off turnover. Well, that was huge. And obviously, that first drive, we knew they were going to come out with something. I thought they'd move the ball. Uh, they got a couple of third down conversions there, but that turnover was huge. And then to get seven points off of that uh, was really, I thought, you know, and ended up being the difference in the game, really, to be able to get that touchdown on the board to give us that cushion. And I, and I really, you know, throughout the course of the whole second half, and they, you know, they make a push and they get the lead. But I kept, I kept thinking to myself, we need high 30s, low 40s uh, just to feel good about this. Again, I mean, I, uh, we, we've been pretty good of knowing, you know, what, what it's going to take, where it is. And I was like, all right, we're going to find a way somehow, some way. Javon Newton put you guys up 24-7. They come right back, Seth McGill with a touchdown, and then Anthony Johnson with another touchdown. He down up a three on the day. We'll yep. get to the last one in a second. But, you know, really, when you got down here to the goal line, imposing your will, you're a former offensive lineman, mm -hmm. that's what they love to do. Well, I thought it was huge. And, you know, it was something that when we, when we played the first game, uh, I really felt like we could run in crucial situations. And uh, we had some third and shorts that we were able to convert, and we felt like we could get a hat on a hat. Um, and I really feel like that's the difference in the game. Uh, you know, last time, uh, you know, we were two and nine on third down. We were 50% on third down um, to, uh, today. And then to go four for four on fourth down, huge. Uh, that's huge. I mean, that is, that, that is huge. And I mean, you know, the first one I was just like, man, I feel like we can get this. And we got it on the first drive. It ended up taking a field goal after that. Uh, but then the other three were just crucial throughout the course of the game. They missed the field goal at one point earlier. But then uh, number six, you're going to be seeing him in your nightmares. Or the oh, my DBs goodness. are a little bit. Uh, they, they really, and you mentioned it, their offense too good to contain. They get it going. And you were up 17 twice at one point, but they rip off 21. Yeah. One. They take the lead in the final minutes of the game. You still got two timeouts. You mm -hmm. get your offense out there. Yeah. How are you feeling at that point? Well, I felt they got the ball down to the one, and I should have. I think I wasted a couple of seconds, but it ended up working out well for us. But I was like, all right, I got to stop the clock here because they'll run it down, and then we won't have it. Uh, so I felt like if we kept holding them, we could keep calling the timeouts there. Uh, they score on the next play. Then it was like, all right, 75 yards. We, we, we can do this. And, and again, I mean, first down didn't go the way we wanted. Second down didn't go the way we wanted. Third down, the fourth down conversion, Tate finds a way. Um, and I, you know, I give him a tremendous amount of credit. Austin found a way to find him. But Tate just said, I'm not going home. Uh, and, I mean, you talk about one guy on one drive getting it done. Uh, that's as good as I've seen. Yeah, he had several catches on that drive, uh, all first downs, just kind of mm -hmm. helping move those chains. 14 catches for 140 yeah. on the day, and he almost gets in on a third down yeah. play down here. He yeah. says he thought he'd stretched yeah. out there. You know, it's funny, it reminded me, we said on the radio, of his touchdown against Carson Newman all the way back, which is exactly. like 10 years ago. Nope. But the effort that that kid gives is phenomenal. No, it is. I mean, it's it's off the charts, and there's a reason he's first team all conference. There's a reason he's team MVP. Uh, there's a reason he's gotten the awards uh, that he's gotten very well deserved uh, and could not be happier for a guy to just have such a drive like that in a game like this to help us win it. A couple of incompletions and you're sitting there, it's fourth and half a yard, fourth and one officially on the scoreboard, ten and a half seconds left. Uh, do, you, do you ever not think about running it, or is it kind of run the no, way? No, I, I, felt, I felt good with all the push that we had been getting, and really we, we had to make an adjustment, um, you, you know, just because I didn't want a guy coming off the edge, so we didn't have that formation set up. So we sent Quentin in motion to block the guy off the edge, and, uh, but I just felt like we could go right ahead and make it happen. I didn't know if it was going to be a QB sneak, but I figured it'd be AJ if it wasn't. Yep. So you get the touchdown, you take the lead, you kind of kind of hang on for a couple of seconds. Yeah. But in yeah. the end, it was all 60 minutes. Yeah, not the best uh, use of our time there. We got a personal foul. 
Uh, one of our guys was celebrating too much and uh, really should have been kicking off from the 35. I think it would have been a completely different ending. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just got to overcome some adversity. Sometimes you just got to find a way to win. And that's really what our guys did. 38-35 into the round of eight. Coming up later on the Coach Shinnick Show, we will dive in a little bit to who you face next. Sure. And coming up next, we're going to talk to your quarterback, Austin Reed. Spend a little bit of time with him. Congrats on the win again. Thank and you. And we'll catch you a little bit later here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. Each week we like to spend a little time with one of our student athletes, our football players. I think this is your second time, Austin Reed. Redshirt freshman quarterback, yeah? I believe so. Did we do one yeah, of these before? It should be. It was a while ago. It was. A lot yeah, has happened yeah. between now and then, because I can officially introduce you as uh, Gulf South Conference Freshman of the Year, Austin Sorry. Reed. Appreciate that. Second team, all GSC. Uh, it was a good yes, season. Sir. I know you, you were telling us you felt like you found a home here. Uh, this truly has kind of become your program, your team in a lot of ways. Yes, sir. Yeah, just a lot of these guys really welcomed me from the jump, from the moment I got here. One of the, a bunch of these older guys just really being leaders and just accepting me and just letting me develop into that leadership role of being the quarterback. And it's really just a blessing, the teammates that I have in this team, really. Finding the right fit, I know, is, is what every kid coming out of high school is trying to do, the right place to play. This coaching right. staff seems like it's a great fit for you. Right. You get to be who you are yeah. and, uh, and really, you know, lead with energy. Yeah. So I just, yeah, just me, I'm, I'm a very outgoing guy, very energetic, very playful at times. You know, whenever I feel like it's time to be fun, I like to have fun, and this coach staff is really good with that. Coach Nobles and I are, as, even as coaches, we're really good friends. He just, we mess around all on the field together, and Coach Shinnick, just great leader, really lets the players be the players and be themselves, and he doesn't try to make them robotic or any type of that way. It's really just a great coaching staff to play for. Thinking back to what seems like forever ago now, Carson Newman, the first game of the season, you jump in a couple series into that game. You had had fall camp, but not any more than that. How far along are you with this offense? Do you feel like you have it mastered, or are you still kind of learning week in and week out? Right, yeah, I feel like there's always room to learn. There's always room to, to see what I could do better with this offense. I could be, whether that's checking protections the right way, whether that's audibling plays to be better. It's just I really wouldn't have it mastered for a while, but I think that's actually great to see that we still have room to get better with it. And it's just, obviously, I do feel a lot more comfortable, though, going into against Carson Newman. Things might have been spinning a little bit. It might have seemed a little fast. And now I just feel like I'm starting to really settle into the offense, into my role as the quarterback, and being able to grow into that role even more. Somebody asked me the other day at a game, I said, does Austin ever dial it down? Is there a chill mode for Austin Reed? Because every time we see you, you're bouncing around, and you're, you're singing, you're having a good time, you're running around. Right, yeah, I'm just, I'm a really energetic guy. I don't know, I feel like God's blessed me with a lot in my life, and I'm very happy with how life is going. I feel like if I'm happy with how life is, and I'm just, I'm so blessed to be here at UWF and to have this opportunity to be the starting quarterback, I don't, I don't know, I just don't feel the need to, to not be happy, to not be outgoing. I don't know, just when you, I'm just very blessed and I just like to show it. What do you do when you're not on the field or working with film or whatever and you're not studying? You play video games, you got anything that you do to kind of kind of relax a little bit or right. take your mind off football? Yeah, I like to decompress when I get home because you know, with a lot of things going on being a student athlete, I like to just take that time to relax and just decompress. And um, 
I don't know. I like to watch Netflix. I like to just chill out, watch Netflix. Disney Plus just came out, so that's a pretty good. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of that. Have you seen The Mandalorian yet? No. I haven't watched any uh, of that yet. I need, that. I need to get I into that. I hear Baby Yoda is all the rage. That's, I see all the memes and stuff on Twitter and Instagram and stuff, so I got to get into it. I got to see what it's about. But yeah, I just like to relax, just watch TV. I'm always watching football and stuff when that's on, whether that's Monday night, Thursday night, Saturday, Sunday. So really just relax and just watch television. And just. And I've had the chance to, to get to know your mom and dad a little bit when they've come right. up for games, and obviously they love it's a little closer than Southern yes, Illinois was, although do. not next door because you're you're from a little further south, you know, down in Florida. When they're up here, do you ever think I want mom to cook me a pregame meal? What what would you have from your mom's cooking if she was cooking for you? Okay, so my mom makes the best chicken parm. My mom and my dad, they both cook it like the exact same. It's fantastic. The chicken, the it's just it's. It's really good. So just this chicken parm made by both my mom and my dad. They both make it the exact same. That's probably number one. I, so good. It's so good. You know you're going to throw a bunch of touchdowns off of that. Oh, 100%. By the way, this kid is a communications major. So next year or the year after, because you're going to be here a little while, right. maybe you interview me? I feel like I'd be pretty good at that. I don't know. I feel like that's my thing, maybe. I think so, too. Thanks for spending some time with us. Appreciate, Appreciate it. Thank it. you awesome. very much. Coming up next year on the show, we will talk about uh, the rest of the fall sports and winter sports that are kicking off and winding down right here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Argo fans, we need your help helping our friends and neighbors in need. During the month of December, our men's and women's basketball teams will be collecting winter coats, hats, gloves, new and gently used winter clothing items to help families in the Pensacola area. Bins will be located inside the UWF Fieldhouse lobby. You can drop off donations throughout the week and at all home games through December 20th. All donated items will be loaded into a truck and delivered to Waterfront Rescue Mission December 23rd, courtesy of our friends at Coastal Moving and Storage. There's nothing quite like coming together over a fresh cooked meal. Face to face, burger to burger, solving the world's problems over fries. There's also nothing like solving the problems right in front of you, like baseball practice, swim team, and getting your family's meals just like they like it all with a few taps on your phone. Yeah, good thing there's more than one way to solve the world's problems. Good thing there's Whataburger. Welcome back in. Time to talk about some of the fall sports that are still going, and we'll touch on the winter sports that have just recently tipped off. But Coach Melissa Walter with the UWF volleyball team joins us now. You guys are getting ready to take off and go to the NCAA regionals. We talked to you on last week's show after another successful GSC tournament in which you, you swept the field and won that title. But now it's on to the next phase. And I know at the beginning of the year you set your goals, and, and you've been to this round now 14 straight years. Is that one of the things you say to the team? We, we'd like to make it here every year? You know, honestly, I don't – Say it anymore. I think our upperclassmen say it, and it's it's just an expectation that we have in our program, and um, I'm excited about that. There was once upon a time where I had to convince my team that we were supposed to be at regionals and all those types of things, and it's just now the expectation is there, and I'm excited about that. You guys won 20 plus games this year. You went unbeaten in GSC play, and this is a team I know. When we started the season, we talked to you way back at the beginning, which seems like forever ago now. Mm -hmm. You know, you had some young players that were coming in, and some players who didn't have a ton of experience, and and you knew you'd have to find their way and, and fill some roles. Do you like where this team is now? What's, what what has the growth kind of been like this season? Oh yeah, we've come a long ways. I think um, earlier in the year, we just we don't really know who we were, and still there's times where. Um, you know, we get out on the floor and we're having to depend on different people, which I think is kind of fun for us and exciting. Uh, you know, Varicia Yan has had an incredible freshman year, and th but I think the name that keeps coming up lately is Ebony Power. She has just had a, her really her last four weeks of play as a senior uh, have been outstanding. You know, she's been somebody that has 
has just risen into a level of playing the game so comfortable, so confident, and we're just excited to see what she can do at regionals. I know when you get to this round sometimes, somebody steps forward that you don't expect maybe or who hasn't played a ton and then gives you something else. That happened in the GSC tournament as well. You had some people uh, last match, Sadie, stepped yep. in and it was, you know, did you look for that as you head down to Boca? Yeah, for sure. I think um, at this point it's about what you've learned about your team and knowing when to pull the trigger on different things and what kind of rope each player has and, you know, kind of feel that out. Um, I love the fact that we've played in multiple different lineups. We've had a ton of different people step up in different situations on the road, at home, all different types of um, scenarios. So I think this is probably the most prepared I've ever felt, most seasoned we've ever had a team that has walked into regionals. So I'm just uh, excited to get on the plane tomorrow. And you'll go down there and face some teams that at least you've seen, and yeah. you mentioned it, you know, not, not a ton of success against them this year, but I think maybe having that experience of playing against them that the girls know now what to expect. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've watched, you know, watched our football team. You know, they didn't have success against Valdosta first round, but um, playoffs is where it matters. And it's the same thing with us. I mean, West Georgia did not play very well the second time we played them, and then they turned around and pushed up to, us to five in the final. And we talked a lot about that this week, that it's actually to our benefit that uh, the regional crossover was not a very good tournament for us. Um, but ironically enough, that was where we made a lot of changes. We made some changes to our offense. We put a lot more pressure on our passer hitters. Just things that were exposed at that tournament were things that needed to be exposed. So I'm excited about our situation. I think people don't really know what we're capable of, and I think our girls are excited to have um, that opportunity to show people how much we've advanced our game. I know you guys work hard. You're working hard in the weight room and practice and everything, but having almost two weeks without a match, a competitive match, does that help or hurt? Um, I think it, I think for us it helps because we've got a lot of players that are older and you know the older they get the harder it is for them to push through a long season and um, you know the things that will help us experience wise we also have to be cognizant of with their bodies but honestly I, I've always felt like the GSC tournament gives us a chance to fight for a championship before we go down and fight for a regional championship and you know the Sunshine State Conference is coming off of just regular season they don't play a conference tournament and I think for us to be able to understand that concept of survive in advance it's only going to help us when we go down there. Barry on Thursday and uh, tournament mode already. Tell those girls though, they don't know what old feels like yet. They don't. They will they, eventually. You know, I, our fifth years <laughs> kind of are starting to, you know, they, they're the ones that I can cut a little bit of slack to, but uh, yeah, the rest of the team when they're yeah, 17, 18, 19 years old, they have no clue what being. Re recovery is a yes, lot easier. Exactly. Good luck, exactly. Coach. Thanks a lot. And we'll look forward Appreciate to talking it. with you again soon. Thank you. And the men's and women's basketball teams will both be in action with a couple of home games this week. The men and women will both play on Wednesday. The fourth Columbus State is in for the women for an early game. It'll be Tuskegee and the men later that night. And then a home doubleheader on Saturday with Spring Hill coming in here to the Fieldhouse. Women play at 2, men play at 4. That is the holiday game, so bring the kids out. Have your picture taken with Santa. No, it will not be me. I'll be on the road with football. Speaking of, we're coming up next. We're going to talk with Coach Pete Shinnick, break down the next round of the playoffs and a matchup with Lenore Ryan right here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, 
That's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. Coach Pete Shinnick joining us again now right here behind beautiful Penn Air Field. And, and Coach, what a, what a great way to come back after a win at Valdosta and get ready for Lenore Ryan. What can we expect from this trip to Hickory? Yeah, uh, team, I, you know, at Pembroke, we never faced them. So uh, had a lot of respect for the program. Uh, their head coach, uh, Drew Cronick, has been there now. Uh, this is his second season, done a fantastic job in those two years, turning that thing around, uh, making it go. Um, they are probably one of the more disciplined teams uh, that we've seen, run a unique offense, uh, option style, wing T style, spread style. They kind of do everything, a lot of motions, a lot of shifts. And defensively, just extremely sound. Uh, I think they got 48 quarterback sacks. 25 plus turnovers, so uh, there's a reason they're 13 and 0. There's a reason they're one of the top teams in the country, and why they've won that conference. Really, kind of a remarkable turnaround for them as they got the new coach, and, and going from three wins, I think, in 17 to 12 yeah. and 18, and then of course this year you mentioned the 13 and 0. There are some common opponents. They've they faced uh, Carson Newman twice this year, beat them both times. They also faced the Wingate team that we beat in the first round of the playoffs. So you've got some film to look at. We do, and you, you know, they're uh, again, they've, they've, they've beaten the team that we couldn't beat, and then uh, they beat a team that we beat. So uh, there is some commonality there. Uh, but I think the thing, again, that, that just stands out, just an extremely well-coached, disciplined team. Uh, they've done a great job in special teams. They've blocked punts. Uh, their punter does a great job with hang time, putting the ball uh, in tough places to get. So, going to be going to be a game where we're going to have to be as consistent and as dialed in as we've ever been. Uh, we've seen this a couple times this year too on the other side of the ball for them defensively. They've got a player out there that you have to know where he is at defensive end. That you know again tackles for loss, sacks, all those things stack up. In fact, leads the team in tackles. You kind of kind of know is that is that the situation? Like well, mark that guy, know where number so and so yeah, is. Yeah, need, need to know where number 32 is. He, he does a great job and he's got 15 plus uh, sacks and uh, as you said leads the team in tackles, which is rare for a defensive end. Uh, but. Uh, you know, he's just got a great motor and really finds a way to get to the ball. No Thanksgiving to deal with this week, so your schedule can be a little more normal. Is it, is it your typical game week schedule for a road game? Yeah, it is. We're gonna um, we're gonna treat it. Obviously, it's a long trip, so we're gonna try to leave Thursday evening. Uh, we're waiting to see if the NCAA approves that. We're we're I think 25 miles away from being a plane flight <laughs> trip, uh, so no fortune with that. Uh, but yeah, plan on leaving Thursday evening and then uh, try to keep it as normal a Friday as possible. For those who don't know out there how it works, that's right, if it's more than 600 miles, you get to fly. If it's less than, and we were trying to do the math to figure out how Wingate, North Carolina, is actually further away than Hickory, but I'm sure there's some smarter people it, it, on campus. It, yeah, you, when you look at it on a map, it shouldn't play out that way, but it does. So. Uh, you know, as far as the team is concerned, you coming off, I, I know you've had a, a little time now to digest the Valdosta win. That was the one box we hadn't checked yet. Um, I, and I know you have to put those things in the rearview mirror, mirror and move on to the next opponent, but I'm sure it still feels good. Oh, it feels great. And uh, again, like you said, we'd never beaten them. And so to get that done uh, was huge. And then anytime you go into someone else's place where they've won a lot of games, they've won a lot of games in a row. Uh, again, they were number one in the country, well deserving of that. Um, and just couldn't be prouder of our guys and how we handled that. We talked about it earlier in the show. Just, you know, to be able to overcome uh, that last part of the game and then to be able to get that game-winning touchdown, uh, that was huge. Everybody come out pretty healthy? Yeah, yeah. We're, we, we look good going into this game, and uh, I think we might get a couple guys back too. So up to Hickory, North Carolina, 1 o'clock kick on, on Eastern time up there. So 12 back here in Pensacola will be on the radio. As usual, a half hour early, 11.30 local time for the pregame show. Coach, good luck this week. Thank and you very much. Looking to move on to the final four. We'll see you next week right here on the Coach Shinnick Show.